Hello, this is John from OptionsMeister.com, and I want to bring you a short recording today on how to adjust a uh, trade gone wild. This particular trade was in NVIDIA uh, earnings trade that I placed on February 13th of 2020, and we'll go through it step by step. So many traders uh, put a trade on, it goes against them, they take it off, I call it puke it, off, puke it out, but uh, there's a lot of times, and in most cases, uh, trading is really an art. Trading is know how to make the proper adjustments. And, and in this particular trade, you'll see how it went way against us. I was able to continue to adjust and roll and adjust and get it back to uh, a semblance of profitability. So let me walk it, uh, you through it step by step by step. So if you, uh, you're looking at the screen, and you'll see that on the left side, I've got the time of the trade execution, the date, and the premium I paid. And then each of those vertical columns you see uh, represent each time that the trade was adjusted. Uh, we start out on the uh, far left on February the 13th, and you can see that the uh, stock was trading around 271.34. We entered a strangle. Um, I put I put it down here. These yellow boxes represent the uh, closest price I could approximate to what the actual price was at the time, but it'll give you a sense of how the pr stock price moved and how we reacted to the various changes in the price. So we started off and we, we sold a 310 call and a 235 put and we collected $535, which is a pretty handsome uh, premium to collect uh, for a, a probably a one and a half to two standard deviation strangle. And the stock was trading at 270. So that was before the close of business on the 13th. And then obviously uh, earnings come out the next day. I uh, didn't really do anything until February the 18th. The stock had moved up to almost 290. You can see here uh, as it moved to 290. And what I did was I rolled the put from the 235 short put up to the 255 put. And for that roll, I collected $125. So now I've got 535 plus 125. You can see that I've indicated that here at the bottom. Then on the, the 9th of March, which was uh, a couple of weeks later, the stock had gone back down 250 below my now short put at 255. I simply elected to close or buy back the, na the naked short call, and I paid $30 to do that. So now I'm in a position with just I'm short a put, uh, a 255 put, the stock's trading at 250. I've collected uh, about $630, so I'm really uh, above my break even. If it closed here, I'd probably make 100 bucks on, on the trade or so. But anyway, uh, two days later on March the 11th, you can see uh, I added, uh, I, I rolled the 255 call down to 242, and on the same trade, I added the 292 and a half call taking in 30 bucks for that uh, particular trade so now I'm, I'm back to a standard strangle the stock's trading at 250 i'm 242 and a half by 292 and a half and these uh, particular strikes that i roll to are not just um, guesses or um, approximations of where i think the stock's going to be they're strictly based on probabilities and based on uh, deltas and we try to keep our deltas somewhat neutralized so on march 13th two days later uh, again, I'm still in the 242 uh, and a half short put, and I rolled the 292 and a half all the way down 40 points to 252 and a half because the stock had tanked some more down to 230. This is when the market really sold off. So this, uh, this is a, about as an acute example of an example as you can get. So now the stock, when we first put the trade on, was trading at 270. Now it's trading at 230. Uh, for this particular adjustment, because of the high probability and or the high volatility, excuse me, we took in $600 on this particular uh, roll. So now I'm I'm sitting with a, a conventional strangle, 252 and a half, 242 and a half, but I'm 12 and a half dollars in the money. Uh, three days later, the market, as you know, continued to tank. It's March the 16th. Now I the price is all the way down to 215. I kept my 242 and a half short put on, but I rolled the 252 and a half down to 230. So now I've got an inverted uh, strangle, 242 and a half, 230. So if it pins in there, I've got about 12 and a half dollars it'll take to buy that back. But the stock is trading all the way down to 215. And for that roll, I collected another $650. On the 27th of March, uh, the stock bounced back from 215, you can see up to, to 260 over that period of 11 days. And um, I, what I did at that time was I rolled 
a, to an inverted strangle from the, where he was a 230, 242 and a half. I was able to roll to the 255, 265 inverted strangle, but still roll up closer to price, but still collect $215 in premium. A lot of times you can't do that, but these were, as you recall, the VIX was extremely high, uh, got up as high as 80. So these were a little abnormal times, but nonetheless, the mechanics are all the same. On the 3rd of April, I rolled, or the, I'm sorry, the, on the 3rd of April, the stock went from 260 uh, down to 245 over these four days. Okay, so on March the 27th, the stock dropped from two or went from 215 up to 260. I rolled this inverted 230, 242.5, $12.5 dollar wide inverted strangle up to 255, 265. So I was able to tighten the inversion and still pick up a credit of $215. Then um, a couple days later, April the 3rd, uh, the stock was back down to 245, got another $15. Uh, I, all I did was close the 250, uh, the five short call, and I left, I still had the 260, because it was out of the money, obviously, and I was in the money on the 265 short put. Uh, three days later, I sold the 272 and a half short call uh, to bring in premium, and I added these wings to define the risk and save some buying power. So the stock had moved from 245 to 260. I added the 272 and a half short call, uh, added these two long wings just to define my risk and to pick up some valuable buying power. The next day, April the 7th, the stock was up five bucks. I still maintained the same strangle, the 265, 272 and a half strangle, but you can see I rolled the short or the long protective put up from 225 to 235. So that, uh, I kept the call the same, 287 and a half. That picked me up another probably a thousand bucks in buying power. So uh, the next day, April the 8th, stock still trading at about 265. I still have the same strangle on. I rolled the put, uh, the long put up again uh, for a debit. You can see I paid a $30 debit the day before and $13. So I spent a little money, but I, I, incre I narrowed that spread between the short put, the 265, and the 240 down to 25. Originally, it was... Uh, $35. Now we're down to uh, $25. So we picked up a thousand bucks of mine power. On the 9th of April, just one day later, stock straight at about 263. So I've got it here, 265. I exited the, uh, I let the 280, the 272 and a half short strike expire. Uh, also the 287 and a half expired. And I rolled the 240 to the 245, the long uh, put so now I've got a $15 wide uh, put spread on. Don't have the call side on at all. Uh, then uh, seven days later, um, Roku, uh, Roku, Nvidia got Roku on the brain. Nvidia jumped up from 265 to 290, uh, and I just took the trade off for 10 bucks. So uh, I was in the trade from February 13 to April 16th, a little over two months. Uh, the trade was. As you can see, it's gone against me. I managed it, I rolled it, and did all kinds of mechanics to keep this trade uh, on the dance floor. At the end of the day, I made $2,500 on this trade. That's a one lot. That's just trading a one lot. Started out with 535. You know, you're looking on an earnings trade overnight to maybe pick up 100 bucks or, uh, or at least or the, at the most 50%, 270. This trade was buried for a long time, yet I was able to. Uh, by proper management and using the mechanics and, and um, maintaining the delta structure, I was able to continue to work this trade up to a $2,500 profit. So that kind of shows you what can happen. It doesn't always happen this this way. Uh, the VIX was ex extremely high this time, so that gives us more premium. But the mechanics are all the same. You might collect less premium, but the mechanics are the same. Um, and uh, I hope you get something out of this. And uh, I'm... Um, that in, in un, learn to understand that you know a trade's not over until you say it's over. So uh, a lot of times we we can't repair them, but in most cases we can at least manage them back to to a break even or uh, to um, some sort of a profit, or in this case a rather significant profit. So I hope this uh, enlightened it a little bit for you. We do this all the time in the room uh, over a period of time. Uh, we don't like it always take us two months, but that's what it does. Sometimes it takes us six months, but. I don't give up on the trades if there's still a, a possibility of bringing them back to break even or a small profit. So I want to wish you the best of luck, good luck, and great trading.